So thank you. Um, so thanks, first of all, everybody, for jumping on. I know this was a short notice call, um, but my hope was that between an early start and the right after work, we'd be able to snag a fair number of folks because I'm sure that there are some questions. I'm obviously happy to take follow-on email, phone calls. I'll have my contact information at the back of this, and I know it was on the materials that were released. So I'm Nancy Thornton. If you've never had the chance to meet me before, I am from Traverse Bay Sunrise Club, and this is um, actually my fifth year as the district's public image coordinator. And in that capacity, I do a few things, but one of the things in particular is to oversee our matching grant process that we have for public image. Not to be confused in any way, shape, or fashion with our foundation matching grant. Totally different thing. Um, so, so that is my role. And last week, we released an email that went to the current club president, president of the elect. And then anybody in our database that is specifically flagged as being a public relations person. Um, I know there's kind of a funny little background noise here. I'm not sure if everyone's hearing that, but if um, it might help if you could mute your phones um, until we've got questions. Um, so also on the phone with me is Lori Morley. Lori is from 9 and 10 News and Fox 32 and is one of the two individuals that's been working really closely with trying to put together a proposal for one of the two grants that we've been out. So what I'd like to do in the time that we have is very quickly touch on um, the rebranding grant, which is one of the two offers that's out there, but we had that last year, so it may be a little bit more familiar to people. And then spend the bulk of this time um, really talking about what this People of Action campaign is that we've proposed, what it includes, you know, what's the benefit to the clubs, and try and answer as many questions as I can. So. Um, you know, if along the way there's a, a question, I guess, you know, maybe go ahead and try and take yourself off mute. But if you don't mind, it might be easier if we do get through most of it. And I'll pause um, here and there and ask for questions. So overall goal, um, you know, what was brought to me by 9 and 10, and we can't really dispute it. They say, you know, there's really a couple of challenges that every service club is dealing with. One is membership and the other is having anybody know anything about what it is that they're doing. So what's the impact of what it is that you're doing? And I think most of us will agree that we're really great at doing our service projects, but sometimes we're not as good. audio from Nancy or everyone? I can't hear you, Nancy. Nancy, I lost your audio. Okay. It, it ended up muting me automatically. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I've just taken myself off mute. So uh, I'm not sure that you missed a whole lot. It was just, you know, we, we want to try and help get the message out across the district. The, you know, our clubs are doing amazing things. Um, if we do this as more of a district-wide kind of a campaign, we'll have a common theme across it, and hopefully the end result is that we'll get a little bit more bang for our buck. Um, in the past, you know, we split it up and let every club kind of do their own thing, um, but we feel that if there's a way that we can pool our resources, we can be more impactful. Um, and so we'll talk about that. So the two grants that were announced, one, as I mentioned, is the rebranding grant, and the other is the People of Action grant. So the, the lower dollar, simpler grant is the rebranding grant. I think a lot of us will see, if we look at where we meet, often um, we're with our good felt banners with the flock letters on them, and we're still sporting that look um, in our club meetings. And Oh, what happened? It, it keeps muting me, so can you hear me again? You know what, Nancy? Are you on your computer okay. and by phone? No, just the phone. Well, just, I dialed in from the phone. Okay, because you're on your computer, too. Oh, I see. Oh, good, you're doing. Okay. 
because I was trying to get that background noise to disappear and it's not disappearing. So. Yeah. So I, yeah, I don't know. I'm dialed in on my phone here. So sorry about that. Okay. Uh, so the rebranding grant is basically let's update our banners, our brochures, any of our signage. Um, you know, some of the clubs have already gone through those things and they're down to their old t-shirts and, and even wanting to update their apparel. So this is a pretty straightforward one for one match. The district caps it at 250. Okay. The clubs can certainly put more in if they want. But what we'd suggest is that things like these freestanding floor banners, you get a lot of mileage out of those because you can take them with you. So, for example, if you're doing something in a school or if you're doing an after hours at the chamber, you know, you don't have to be looking for some hook on some non-existent wall to hang your club banner. This is like a freestanding rack card for the club. Um, and it makes it really great to be able to have your club be a little bit more visible and outside of just the four walls of your meeting place. And in general, we need the branding across the board to get updated. So the brands that you see, that example from St. Joe Benton Harbor Club, that's the current kind of branding. That was introduced over five years ago. I would argue that the more we look the same, the stronger we are. We're a transient group of folks. People work in one place. They live someplace else. Their jobs take them across the territory. They bump into Rotary everywhere. But if every interaction has us looking different, yeah. we don't get the same impact out of that that we should. And so as a result, you know, we really encourage people update all these materials and pull that banner that you've used at the fundraiser for the last 15 years out of the back of the closet, make the $40 investment it might take to replace it, and hopefully we're good to go. Um, so that's the rebranding um, grant. And I don't know, are there any questions on that one? Yeah, ask her if we can get a tablecloth too. Hearing no questions. <laughs> Um, one important thing about this grant is it's a reimbursement just as it has been in the past, which means you apply, we approve, you execute the program, you submit your paid invoices, show zero balance, we cut the check back to the club. So this needs to be executed in full um, pretty much before the end of May so that we've got enough time to send a check back. Okay. Okay, so the People of Action campaign. This one's a little bit different one. Uh, the, the district's going to match this one more aggressively. Um, so it's one and a half on the dollar. So if a club um, puts in 500 or if you team up with your neighboring club and you do 250 each, you know, get to the 500, we'll put in 750. That begins to generate a pool of funds where we can, um, as a consortium of clubs, um, be able to use that for um, media buys and advertising, basically. And we're going to focus those efforts with um, the station that Lori represents, which is 9 and 10 News and Fox 32. So um, this one, we're actually proposing that we run beyond this Rotary year. It will be funded this year, but because so many of our clubs have major activities in the summer months, in the past, we've never been able to help promote those because our PI grant had to be closed out and reported in, in in April. So this gives us a little bit more flexibility. So let's talk about the two components uh, because it's not just being on TV. Uh, and, and that's what we're probably most familiar with. You know, you, you're watching the TV news. You might see an advertisement or a public service announcement that comes up. There are news features talking about things happening in the community. Um, and so that, I think, is what most folks are familiar with. And so, yes, that is part of what we're proposing. So we would be looking to take the People of Action campaign PSA, which Ed has been showing through his district governor visit. There's a 30-second spot there. Um, we're looking to run that with what we call paid placement because you have to put a little skin in the game to make sure that those things are showing up when you want them to. Um, so, yes, a station will run a public service announcement, but we want to make sure that it's showing up at some time other than just 2 o'clock in the morning. So in order to do that, we need to put some funding in in order to get those to show up at the times that we want. 
the station will match um, one for one with what they call run of schedule. So that kind of goes into this random rotation and you just have no idea when those will show up. But don't think that it's only two o'clock in the morning because I can tell you that from our own club experience, we had a situation where we had our club uh, PSA that we had created with the three Traverse City clubs showed up during opening ceremony of the Olympics showed up during um, Fallon's first, you know, um, tonight show appearance, um, showed up during Saturday Night Live, and these were not times that we had specifically purchased, but they showed up then, and that was really cool. Um, the other thing that the stations agreed to do is if a club or a group of clubs already has a 30-second spot that they've used, and I know some of our clubs do have this, we can put that in the mix as well. Um, so we'll, we'll cycle that through as a public service announcement. And then we are going to work the living daylights out of a master calendar. We're going to encourage the participating clubs get their events registered um, in a way that flows through the district calendar. Um, the station is going to take all of those events and they will enter them in their community calendar. And that is where we're going to be sourcing content for new features. So our goal is to have at least a monthly feature, but I think it will happen much more frequently based on the amount of good things that are happening across the district. Um, so we'll end up being able to feature the good work that our clubs are doing. So these will be news features, you know, that will get spun out during the evening news or the morning news. And everything that we do over there um, is going to be used also on their digital platform. Um, so that's just, as I said, it's, it's working. Um, Pitching stories. <laughs> we'll coordinate that at the district level. We're not going to expect every single club on their own to somehow call the station and try and figure out how to get their stories in. So we'll try and do it in a coordinated way. And if we have so many clubs participating that we need to mediate that in some way, then we'll do just what we're doing right now. We'll get everybody together and we'll poll, we'll vote, we'll come up with something that's fair. Um, this is funny. I've got two computers. I keep hitting the keyboard of the other one, and that's not doing anything for me. <laughs> On the digital side, which is something that most folks are maybe not as familiar with, unless this happens to be your, um, your, your business, um, is you know a, a lot of different things. So the station has their website. Uh, they also have mobile apps. Um, they deal up advertising through those channels. They also have a social media platform on Facebook. Um, so anything that gets generated, um, any videos that we have, the news reports that we can generate, we can repurpose all of that across on the social media side. And then there we put some funding behind that because now you can begin targeting where some of this information gets dealt out. I'm sure anybody who's active on Facebook or even on Google, you know, when you go on, something pops up in your face. So things are getting pushed to you based on your demographic. And so this will allow us to take the, the things, the good things we can do on the broadcast side and then supplement that with things that the clubs can do directly. So as an example, on the call yesterday, um, you know, representative from Elk Rapids said, hey, we have got a group of students that are going down to Haiti. And we would love to figure out how could we get some coverage. And so they're saying, well, why don't you, li we'll arrange it ahead of time and have them live stream that on our social media channels. And so that's just one example of the kind of creativity that we can do when we move into the digital environment. And it eliminates all the geographic boundaries that we've got. Um, so where the broadcast side of it may not completely penetrate 100% of the footprint of our district, the digital side completely eliminates that. So that's what we're looking to do over on the digital side. It's a, a mix of social media stuff, online stuff through all the various channels that the station has, and then also putting some financial stuff behind that as well. So here's a hypothetical. Let's say we had budgeted for a club that, and these are all fictitious numbers, but let's say I said I'm going to do $250 in a budget to help boost some of the things, you know, into their market and, and try and help drive traffic to their Facebook page or to their website. Um, so if you're um, at a club and you're not inside of the television station coverage, they can um, set it up so that we'll allocate twice as much 
to those geographies to kind of make up for the fact that maybe we don't have the TV station reaching. So the goal here is fair to all concerned. So that's what we're looking to do with the broadcast and the digital. And as I said, for every dollar that we put in, the station's going to do a one for one match. Um, so they, you know, the value of our advertising on their channels, you know, they can double that. The the value, the cost of what it takes for us to do a, a paid PSA, they double that in terms of equal time where they can run the PSA. So we'll get a lot more bang for the buck. Um, and so this is just quickly, this is the 9 and 10 news channel. This is the broadcast reach, so kind of the solid gold, and you see the the little dash lines I'm pointing, obviously you can't see that, but it's on your screen. And this is Fox 32. So each of those 235,400 households, but here to put it into perspective, now you add in the digital side of that and it's a huge multiplier. You know, the broadcast is great. If you happen to have been watching the TV station at the time that PSA aired or at the time that that news report was, was broadcast. But now on the digital platform, you eliminate the geographic boundary and you also eliminate time. You can just keep dealing that same information out all the time. It's not just a one-time shot like it is on the TV. So that's the overall impact of what we can do. Um, with the People of Action campaign, and as I said, trying to keep a common theme. Um, at the end of all of the, um, any advertising, we will drive them to a unique uh, a website that will create just for this campaign that will have sort of a club locator on it so that people can uh, connect up with the clubs that are in their area. Um, we will take each club's preferred online presence, whether it's your website or your Facebook page, and that's what's going to go into that map. I'm actually um, going to uh, recommend that we have all clubs on that, whether they are part of the campaign or not, um, because I really think that you know some of this is the district making an investment in all of the clubs, trying to help with membership. So there will be some things where if we, for some reason, have a month where we're really light on stories, if we've got some amazing things happening, like a life leadership conference, as an example, we might promote a district level program that a lot of clubs benefit from and participate in. Um, so I just wanted you to kind of get a sense of, you know, what we're talking about when we talk about the, the People of Action campaign, what the difference is between what gets on the station versus what does it really mean when we talk about the digital campaign and then give you a sense of the potential reach. Right now, we're just getting ready to start up some stuff um, because obviously we need to give our clubs time to digest all of this, make some decisions, and, and you know collect your funding. Um, so in the meantime, we know that we have enough interest that we can front some funding to the station to get some things started. And so this is what we've um, proposed doing. Um, once we get a couple little I's dotted and T's crossed, um, for November, we'll kick that into action where we're going to be using the 32nd um, People of Action PSA and start getting that in the rotation during the news programs in the morning and the evening on both um, 9 and 10 and Fox 32 and CBS programs. So that's what we've suggested um, to do right now is an immediate thing to hopefully get some excitement out there and, and start generating a buzz. I don't know if you noticed, but last weekend, um, the station also got out and covered the fall conference for youth exchange. So we had a nice little couple minute piece that ended up being shared back on social media. Uh, and then we obviously shared that as a district across all of our clubs. And we're already pitching a number of other um, stories that are both district level things and club um, level things. and. You know, just as I said, you know, just trying to generate um, a, a bit of a pipeline as we work towards um, December, January, where hopefully we'll be able to then bring in all of the participating clubs. And that's that, that's kind of it. I mean, we had some questions as I came up yesterday um, already, and so I've tried to address those here. Um, Maybe not in the same order, but how do I get my project added? You know, if you're a club runner um, club, you can just put it in your event calendar the way you always do, but there's a little checkbox that allows it to automatically show up on the, on the district calendar. So it's just 
check the box. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. And um, for clubs that are not a club runner on site, and they can just send a direct email and we'll get that stuff entered for them. Um, you know, the how can we be sure the projects are featured, as I said, that's just going to be communication, communication, communication. I mean, we're going to have to make sure that we're aware of what's going on. We understand the impact of what that story is and that we're then able to sell that. Um, it isn't, um, you know, the sales team at, at the station, and Lori is great to be on this, but Lori, maybe you could explain how we then go about presenting this kind of information to the news team. You'll need to get yourself off of mute. I think it was star six. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that was weird. I didn't realize that I had been muted. <laughs> yes, we all did. <laughs> um, so we're going. I, I am going to be looking at the um, district-wide calendar weekly, and so we're hoping that people put things on that calendar. And I'm going to be sharing. No matter what, the news team already looks at our nine and ten news calendar to find upcoming events to cover as stories, but I'm going to be prioritizing, helping them prioritize with the people that are par participants in this um, group. So I'll be sending them the stories of the participants as well. So definitely they'll get, you know, doubly hit per se yeah. if, if we're in this group. Um, by coming together with, you know, smaller pots of money, we're able to put together a really large campaign, depend, I mean, hoping that people participate in this, and get out our message, which is we, we want people to know what we're doing in the communities. And the way that we can obviously help with that is by doing news stories. And the news department is 100% and, 100 on board with helping us achieve that. So um, it'll just be making sure we know of that me personally, if I know of the event, where it's taking place and contact information. And then I am actually going to be putting together, and I apologize, Nancy, that I haven't gotten that to you yet, but I'm putting together a form that includes the information that I'll want you to get to me that has all of that, tells you what I need in order to submit it to the news department to be better, you know, better reciprocated. For instance, if you have a flyer or something that has all the information, I'll want that. I want the contact information for someone that's running the event because we need to make it as easy for them as we can. And that's another mm -hmm. way that will obviously get um, picked up by the news department. And then we all have, or not all of us, but some of us have events that are happening that are similar to other clubs. And so I want to try to do a good job of if someone is having an auction and we cover that, making a point to mention the other people's auctions that are participants of this. And it doesn't necessarily, like, there will be obviously people that don't participate, don't participate are going to still be covered and they, you know, they'll gain something from this as well. But it will all work better if we work as a team. So here's an example. Um, in uh, the first weekend of June, I think, um, Benzie Sunrise, huge um, event is like Benzie that takes place that weekend. Well, Son of a Gun, the very next month, um, I think it's Grayling, has their Black Bear Fondo, which is another cycling event. So if you've got cycling events that are attracting hundreds of people into the area, why wouldn't you want to cross, um, you know, cross promote? If you've got people that are watching that, you'd want them to be aware of the fact that, hey, if this is something that you love to show up and support, we've got another one of these things happening next month. It happens to be over in Grayling. Um, so that's part of why we're going to filter things through the district as well, because we can have sort of that broader view where an individual club may not have the same kind of visibility to what's happening across the district. Um, we can do that by way of our assistant governors, by way of, you know, Ed having gone to all the clubs, and, and uh, by way of our event calendar. And so the form that Lori's talking about is also just to, it doesn't mean you've got to fill that out in addition to filling out your event. It's just to kind of guide you through, like if you're a club runner and creating the event, 
make sure you include those things that she's asking for so that when she sees it in the event calendar, the information she needs is there. Exactly. Does that make Sorry. sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. We don't want everyone to have to do double the information. And so right. we're going to make it easy by I'm going to be checking the district calendar. And if I have questions, it will be so much easier for me if there's a contact information mm -hmm. for me before I send it to news because I can kind of see like, okay, they're going to also want to know this or this. Mm -hmm. The who, when, why, where, what. <laughs> um, so... But I, that's why I, we really want to make this as simple for everyone else as possible. And so there might be times that we ask someone to come because we're going to be doing a story. And if you have something similar and you want to be in the story, then obviously there's sometimes where pe there's some people that don't want to be a part of the story. So <laughs> we just kind of want to have all of our I's dotted and our T's crossed and know who we can talk to and um basically make this a huge, a huge success. Yeah, and so basically oh. we're, we're looking to get started as soon as we can. And then just to do this literally like daily, <laughs> daily stuff, um, being out there, certainly with PSAs, literally now through July. Um, I mean, that's really our goal is to just be completely in the face of the public um, with rotary impact stories that are coming from the field organization, basically from the club. Um, any, Lori, anything else um, that you'd like to add at, at this point? I want to make sure that we open up um, the lines. I think with all of us having been muted, I think star six was how I got myself off mute. So if you have a question, you'll probably need to do the same thing. Let me also just move to sort of the timeline um, page. I know this was in the materials that were released via email, but um, we are looking to get applications in by the end of this month. It's a very short form. Actually, both, both styles of grants are very, very simple in terms of the application form. Um, it's kind of a one-pager with a signature, and that's it. Um, so we'll, within a couple of weeks, we will have established, you know, who can, who's... Um, going to be part of this and that actually helps set our budget. Um, it's important to note that clubs are allowed to apply for both kinds of grants. We've got a, a couple of clubs um, that are interested in, in maybe doing that. And so in the interest of fairness, so that every club has a chance to participate in some capacity, what we'll do is if a club has submitted for both kinds, we'll put the higher valued one in for the first round of evaluations. And then if there are still funds left, then we'll come back and we'll look at the second grants that were submitted. So we'll just try and use the higher value ones up front, um, you know, in the first round. Um, on the reporting side, the re for rebranding is going to be pretty simple. You know, go out there, do the project, send us the paperwork that shows that you did it and that you paid for it, and then we'll cut you a check. Um, the people of action one were in the past when, you know, we had um, those higher value grants were quite a bit more complicated and had a lot more reporting. This is simple. It's write a check. Um, you know, it's going to be deep part of our team and let's just get as much mileage out of this as we can collectively. And there'll be things that I can do in terms of coaching the various folks in the clubs on using some of the customizable people of action materials that are available in the brand center so we can really boost up what we're doing on social media in particular. Um, so those are the dates and the timelines. Questions? I'll Nancy, apply it here. Yeah. Or someone is wondering if you're going to send the slide deck, if you can email that. Can you do that? Yes. Yeah. So a couple of things. Um, Kathy has been recording this, which means that um, we'll be able to have a link that we can share with um, people as a follow-up. So we'll send that out. I can certainly attach the slide deck to that. But for the people that were, didn't have the benefit of actually being on the call, they'll have the option of listening um, and seeing it um, in a recorded version. So, yes. And then what I will also do is if there are some additional questions that come in, I will actually build out this FAQ list a little bit more, um, and I'll include that when I send it out. 
Other questions? My question is, uh, was this the same session yesterday morning? I missed that. I wasn't near a computer. Yes, I just offered it um, uh, at two different times just to try and help get as much um, availability of folks as possible. So um, I, I think we may have addressed things a little bit more clearly today than yesterday. <laughs> so it was more of a dry run. Um, so we uh, fine-tuned. So, so yes, it was the same presentation. Thank you very much. Other questions? Awfully quiet out there. I'm very excited that yesterday, yesterday or it was the day before, um, we got our first application in already. And so, and it was from, I, I posted this, we've got a public image Facebook group for the district. Uh, and I said I was especially excited because it's a 24, 25 member club. So, um, you know, when some of our smaller clubs can get excited about this, that's, that's in, I'm really enthused. So I'm um, I'm hopeful. My greatest hope, and if if Ed's listening, I'm I'm hoping I'm going to have to come back and ask for more budget. <laughs> I am listening, <laughs> and I'd love to have that happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but you know, it's something that's fundamentally different than what we've done in the past. And I really do appreciate um, Ed your support and the support of the rest of the leadership team to say, you know what, let's just try something new and see what we can do with it. Um, I really do think that, and, and it's important to mention, um, Lori and uh, her her sidekick Teresa are both also Rotarians. So. Um, you know, highly motivated to try and support this cause to help get the story out. I just Any other questions? I'll, I'll just add a comment yeah. that I really am excited yeah. about. I think the potential for this is almost unlimited. And one of the things that I would love to see when you talk about small clubs is partner. Do it together. This is something right. that we can all get on board with. And depending on the availability of funds or what it is that we want to showcase, I think there's so many opportunities to just do this together. And that's yeah. what it looks like to me. Even as a, as a district governor who, who's not within the 9 and 10 reach, you know, I happen right. to live in Holland. But I think this is exciting, and it's the kind of thing that we're going to be able to share throughout the district Again, I just think it has so much potential, and I'm really excited and want to thank you and thank 9 and 10 for doing it. Now let's thank go you, and get them. <clears throat> yes. And I also want to add to that because I don't think that we touched on it, and maybe I missed it. Um, but I do plan to look at – you mentioned how you're not in our area or in our demographic marketing area. But I do plan to put the events on community calendars for other – like Wood TV 8 and newscasts that aren't in our area because I, I do have uh, connections there as well. But even if I didn't, I think that most television stations have some sort of community calendar and why mm -hmm. not put it out there? I'm sure they go about it the same way we do as far as looking for information to cover. So, you know, maybe they'll end up with more publicity that way as well. And then we can share those news stories. So. Yeah. I got it. Wonderful. Fabulous. Any other questions from those of you who've taken the time to, to dial in? All right, I'm excited. So I'm hoping um, that this actually, we've been talking about the need to do more of these kinds of conference calls, meeting with our club folks and and I am hoping to start setting up um, some of these on a more regular basis because there are a lot of really helpful resources and tools that are underutilized. And I'd love to put together these little 30-minute sessions maybe to coach on some aspect of something. So stay tuned for that because, you know, the, the better we all work together, I think the, the bigger impact we'll make. Hello. Nancy. 
Before we go, Orville's yeah. got some questions yeah. here that he, apparently he's asking questions. How does he, <laughs> he doesn't know how to unmute? I can you hear me him. now? I've unmuted him. He's, re he's ready to go. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. You, you can hear me now? Yes. Yep, I, yep, I unmuted you, Orville. All right. Welcome All right. Back. Welcome back, Orville. Well, thank you. It's, uh, it was too long. Three weeks is crazy. <laughs> and then I came oh, back wow. with a cold. So, well, oh, my, my question is simply... Would we have an opportunity some of this time to put in a plug for membership to let people know that these things are fun and exciting to be a part of and that they can too by just going to rotary.org uh, and finding a club close to them? Well, this, the, our call to action, yes, Orville, that is sort of the whole message of this is that we're a group of folks that are out there and doing stuff. And if that tugs at your heartstrings, we want you to come and connect with us. Wonderful. And then we're going to take, and we're going to take them to a website address that is specific to this campaign, and every club in our district with an online presence, and the station is even willing to create an online presence via Facebook for our clubs that don't have any presence. Um, so we do have five clubs, I think, that don't have either Facebook or a website, and so we can, at minimum, get a Facebook page up there. So that we've got a way for people visiting to have a path back to every club that we've got in the district. And that's something I'm committed to, quite frankly, whether they're participating in this campaign or not, because I feel it's the right thing to do. Music to my ears. Thank you. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know Orville, Orville is from the club in Muskegon, but he is our district membership chair. So hence the big plug for membership. Hi, everybody. <laughs> We're glad to have you. Anything else? I know we've run a little bit long, and so we may have lost some folks, but um, again, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, and, and we've got time, you know, it's the 15th. Um, if you've got any questions, um, the last slide there, which will be in that deck, um, has my contact information on it. And as I said, no later than probably tomorrow, we will send an email back out to the same group of folks. So that would be the president, the president elect, and any designated public relations person with a copy to our leadership team and assistant governors and Orville um, with a link to this presentation as well as a copy of this presentation. Um, and, and, as I said, feel free to follow up with any additional questions you have. If you need me to speak with members that are on your board or find a way of me actually dialing into a board meeting to explain something, I'd like to try and be as available as possible. Okay? Great. Sounds exciting, awesome. Nancy. Thanks. Well, thanks again, everybody. I thank you, Kathy, for facilitating and recording this. Um, and I hope everybody has um, a wonderful evening. Thank you.